Hello, welcome to Avalon Priestess TV. My name's Demi from Rockstar Priestess. Today we're talking about Morgan Le Fay as a goddess of death and death as a part of priestess work. Now, I have been training as a scent priestess and the scent priestess tradition comes from the ancient temples of Egypt. And a big part of the use of sacred oils in Egypt was as anointing for the dead before they make their final transition or after they make their final transition into death. And as I was feeling into this last year on my scent priestess training and thinking about Morgan Le Fay, as I always do since I am a priestess of Morgan Le Fay, I was drawing this picture of Morgan Le Fay anointing King Arthur at his deathbed. And I had this sudden moment where I thought, oh yes. And I had this sudden moment where I got it. And this deep feeling of Morgan Le Fay as a death priestess. And being that energy that holds people as they cross over from life to death. Now, when we think about goddesses of death, we usually think of them as this scary, confronting, terrifying thing. Yeah, we think of Kali from the Hindu pantheon, who has a necklace of skulls and is like, and it's just very confronting and challenging and cuts away anything that needs to die. Yeah, we have that energy. And if we think about death in a Western Celtic goddess situation, we think of possibly the Morrigan, who is a battle goddess and who holds that warrior edge of death on the battlefield. Mighty deeds, good stuff. And we think of Valkyries, the ones who take those who had a noble death on the battlefield. And it's all very battly, right? And when we're thinking about Morgan Le Fay as a goddess of death, I feel like when we're thinking about Morgan Le Fay, she is that edge between the goddess and the priestess. She is the goddess who is priestess. She is the goddess who is an embodied priestess at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when we're thinking about Morgan Le Fay as a death goddess, yes, we see her as she often appears to us, as a raven-clad dark goddess on a stormy night, as someone who holds the sword and challenges you to see the truth, no matter how confronting or terrifying it must be, the one who challenges you to die to what was before, so what is intended to come in can come in. She is that, but as a death goddess, I want us to think of her as a death doula, a death midwife, a soul midwife. And when we think of the story of Morgan Le Fay, and in so many of the old stories of Morgan Le Fay, we have her being called when King Arthur is dying after his final battle. And Morgan Le Fay is called to his side and she is the one that takes him in the boat across the waters to Avalon. And if we're thinking about this in a mythic, mythological concept, Morgan Le Fay is the psychopomp. She is the one that bridges the veils between life and death. And she is the one who takes King Arthur on the journey into death. And that is what the water is representing in this story. Water in ancient Celtic stories is often a metaphor for crossing over into the other world. So as Morgan Le Fay takes King Arthur on his boat to Avalon, the undying place, the place where the place where fairies dance and the dead dance with them. As she takes him across on this boat, she is taking him by the hand, midwife him midwifing him, death dealing him across the very transition of death. And she is with him as death priestess. 
And this, I feel, is a lost part of processing. And it is a part I am learning and reclaiming right now. And when we look at the history of death and dying, the care of our beloved dead, that is a role that fell to the women in many cultures. Especially in ancient Greece, where I have been researching this a lot. Death, lamentation, funeral rites, and care of the body, preparing the body for the ceremony, preparing the body to be entombed, that was the work of the women acting as priestess in the family. So we have this tradition of the priestess really being the midwife of the veils at the end of life. And when we are thinking about Avalon, this is even stronger because Avalon is an Isle of the Dead. When, if we're thinking about Glastonbury as Avalon, Glastonbury, that small town in Somerset in England, if we're thinking about Glastonbury itself as a sacred isle, it was known as the Isle of the Dead. It was a place where the dead came to rest hundreds and thousands of years ago. Hmm? So we have this link of Avalon as death and yet this part is still being reclaimed. And as we walk with the inspiration of Morgan Le Fay, we are called to reclaim death priestessing as a key part of what it means to be an Avalonian priestess. We are being asked to look beyond the terrifying battle goddess and the raven-clad sorceress on top of the mountain who's freaking everybody out. Beyond that, to step into that priestess love that can hold those big transitions of life. And the biggest one of all, the transition from life into death. And our world is so scared, so scared of death. Our world is in complete denial that death exists. We have a youth obsessed culture. We have practices in hospitals that are to keep people alive at all costs, even if it is a horrific experience. And we have the collective climate change crisis, which is in itself a big denial of death. And our work as priestesses, like so many other things, like so many other sacred parts of life that we're here to honor and re-see as sacred is to bring that presence into death. Not necessarily jump right in and be a death priestess and be there with people as they die, but just to really step in and ask ourselves, how can I be with this? How can I shift this perception that death is something to be avoided at all costs, that it's bad and it's the worst thing that can happen? How can I sit with this? Hmm. And that's an inquiry I'm deepening into as a priestess of Morgan Le Fay. So if you would love to learn more about Morgan Le Fay, I have a free class called the Morgan Le Fay Priestess Activation. You learn all about her many different faces because she is a shapeshifter goddess, she's a death goddess, she's a shadow queen, and she's an enchantress and a fairy lover and a healer. So if you look in the comments below, you can sign up for your free Morgan Le Fay Priestess Activation class, which includes a guidebook and an MP3 and a recorded ritual, which is really amazing. And if you're interested in this path of Avalonian priestessing, come and join me over at Rockstar Priestess, where we are diving deep into what it means to walk as a renewed priestess of Morgan Le Fay, priestess of Avalon in the world today. Sending you so much love. Bye.